Today I'm going to talk about cystic fibrosis. This is an autosomal recessive disorder. This means that both parents must be carriers of the condition for the child to get cystic fibrosis. It is actually the commonest inherited genetic disorder in Caucasian people in the UK and occurs in 1 in 2,500 births. Cystic fibrosis is caused by a mutation on the long arm of chromosome 7. This will affect cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductor regulator and this is responsible for the transport of chlorine ions. These are found in epithelial cells and these will occur in the bronchus, the GI tract, the respiratory tract, hepatobiliary system and sweat glands in the skin. So as you can imagine cystic fibrosis will affect multiple systems. Cystic fibrosis will affect respiratory secretions. They will be more viscous and this will reduce the mucociliary clearance as secretions are difficult to move. This will lead to infections and ultimately bronchiectasis in later years. Patients with cystic fibrosis tend to develop infections with gram-negative organisms. In the intestine, cystic fibrosis will cause decreased absorption of fat which will lead to nutritional deficits in particular in vitamins A, D, D, E and K as these are fat soluble vitamins. Decreased absorption of fat in the small intestine will also affect stools and the decreased water content in the intestines can give intestinal obstruction. So what are the symptoms? Well, in babies, they tend to present with obstruction secondary to meconium. They will be very unwell and fail to thrive. In adolescent and adult males, they may present with infertility due to absence of the ducts, ductus deferens. Respiratory and GI symptoms may predominate in the presentation. These include wheeze, breathlessness, cough or sputum, gallstones and some may go on to develop the complication of osteoporosis. What tests should be done in cystic fibrosis? Well the best test is the sweat test where a drug is injected to stimulate sweating and a chlorine concentration of greater than 60 millimoles per litre on two occasions indicates cystic fibrosis. Also, as the lungs are predominantly affected, it is useful to get a chest x-ray and spirometry and sputum culture on the sputum produced. It's useful to do blood tests such as FBC and urine and the vitamin levels A, D, E, K, e and K. So how do we manage cystic fibrosis? Well the main management is to reduce the amount of respiratory infections and therefore reduce the likelihood of the patient developing bronchiectasis. Patients will be taught sputum clearance techniques including chest percussion, postural drainage, active cycle of breathing and use of flutter devices. They may also be given drugs to reduce the mucus to clear secretions. A common one is nebulized recombinant human DNAs which breaks down the high concentration of DNA in dying cells. Pancreatic insufficiency is treated with crayon as the pancreas is affected in cystic fibrosis, both exocrine and endocrine functions. The crayon is taken with every meal. Also, some patients may benefit from prophylactic antibiotics if they are in certain gram-negative infections. All important things to consider is to screen for diabetes, depression, 
osteoporosis and to offer fertility and genetic screening to patients with cystic fibrosis if the need is required. Thank you all for listening. That concludes my presentation on cystic fibrosis. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more medical education videos.